Hello everyone, my name is Adam Vox, and welcome to another Windows 10 Tips tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to convert videos in Windows 10, which includes splitting multiple video files together. This is going to use the Mac HD Video Converter Pro for Windows software, and you can download it on the link in the description below. Go ahead and download the installer and install the software. It doesn't install any bloatware, so you're good to just kind of tell it OK over and over. Once you have your software installed and activated, go ahead and open it up here and your interface will look like this. If you want to click the Options button, you can change a couple things, such as whether or not it opens the output folder when it's done converting, or if it just turns off altogether when converting. Then you can change where your video output folder is, that's where it puts your final converted video, and your snapshot folder, which is where it takes video screenshots or snapshots out of your videos. When you're done changing these options, go ahead and hit Done. You have a couple more settings over here on the right hand side if you want to do specific things. Safe mode is if you've had it crash while converting, you can tell it to do that just in case something's wrong. Use high quality engine is going to, I'm going to always leave that on because it uses the highest possible quality conversion with their encoders. If you have a interlaced video, for example, if you ripped it through a DVD, from a DVD and did not de-interlace it while ripping or it, you just for whatever reason have a video that's interlaced which means it has the little black bars on it you can de-interlace with that and it, when, when we add multiple video clips together which I'll go ahead and do for the sake of this video you can merge them together using this software but you have to actually have them added before this will pop up then you can tell it how many CPU cores to use in the majority of cases unless you know a specific reason to change it you'd leave it at the maximum possible number that it'll select you or let you select I have eight cores so I'm gonna use all eight cores to make sure I'm getting the most out of the software now to choose a video you can either choose a DVD source to rip from a DVD by clicking this button and then choosing your DVD drive my DVD drive is currently operated by a blue or occupied by a blu-ray so it won't let me do anything However, you can also click this big blue button to actually choose a video file, or you can drag and drop into the interface. So if I pull up my down downloads and pull up our Batman Assault on Arkham rip that I did in the previous DVD ripping tutorial, I can literally just drag it onto the program and it's automatically going to load up the options for setting it up. And you have a bunch of different profiles. You have general profiles for MP4s, AVIs, converting it for iPhone, iPad, MP4. You can convert it strictly to a music file. If you say have a music video and you want to convert it to an MP3, I may spe do a specific tutorial on that later. If you have specific devices you want to convert it to for iTunes, for Apple TV, for iPods, all sorts of profiles to choose from. So figure out why you're converting your video, what you're going to use it for, and choose a profile. For the sake of this example, I'm actually going to convert it for Xbox One here. So we're going to do MP4 format for Xbox One. We're going to drag the high quality slider up here all the way to high quality. If you're not worried about quality so much and just want it to convert quickly, you can drag that slow slider all the way down to fast and it'll be, it'll be a bit less quality. You know, it won't be, look quite as good, but it'll be a quick conversion if that's your priority. I'm all about having as high quality as possible, so I'll have it on the HQ side. Then click OK. If you're doing a single render, then, or a single video, then this works for you. You can just go ahead and hit run. Or you can add multiple videos to this queue and then hit run. But you can also, real quick here, go ahead and edit your actual video. Here you can adjust the audio volume. So for whatever reason, the audio isn't loud enough, you can actually crank that up. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you know a reason that the audio is too quiet. You can add subtitles if you have a subtitle file for this video. You can do a little preview here with this playhead of your movie here. You can crop the video if for whatever reason it's recorded in a weird format. You can actually crop it. So you can do a letterbox crop to make it more cinematic. You can make sure it's 16 by 9, which is normal HD quality, you know, HD aspect ratio widescreen. You can, for whatever reason, crop it to 4 by 3 so that it's a square. Or you can do a literal 1 to 1 square. You have a couple different options here. Or you have free cropping. If you, for whatever reason, just want to make a video that's like, it's on your own size here, but we're going to do letterbox just for the sake of having something in this video. And then lastly, you can actually trim up videos. So if you have too much on your video file here, you can actually choose, you can actually crop it off. So I'm going to crop off the credits here, enable trim, uh, drag that slider up here for the credits, and it's going to chop off those credits. And then you can either apply that to all of your clips, 
by hitting apply to all or you can just click done. You don't want to hit apply to all if you're using multiple clips and you don't want those settings across all of your clips. But now if we want to add a second video file to attach to this video file in one final video, you know, you know, take multiple clips and have one final video, then all we got to do is navigate and find another video clip here. So I've just pulled another video clip from a project that I'm working on. It automatically selected the profile that the other one's done. And now I can go over here and select merge output video. And this is going to put both of these video clips in the order that they're shown here onto the same vi final video. And then you can move them around with these up and down arrows. And then you can completely remove them from the project here by hitting the trash can to remove them. You can also use this trash can at the top to remove all clips from this queue if you just don't want any on there as, at all. If you want to do photos instead of videos, you can actually, you know, at the start of this software, you can actually choose photos and then find some pictures that you want to add. So let's go down to our weekend, select folder, and it's going to add the pictures from my vacation trip I just took last weekend. It's going to take a minute to load them in here. And then I can choose what format it wants to convert it to. Again, we'll just leave it at the Xbox One format just for kicks. And then if we hit edit and go through the timeline, it's going to have all of these pictures that we took. And then you can go through and tell it how to sort it, either by photo location, creation date, which is probably what you want to be sorted by date, or by file name if you have them named, you know, specifically something. Then you can choose the time interval with which the pictures are displayed. You can add more photo folders to this list and just keep adding more pictures. And you can add music to it if you want to make a music photo slideshow here, which is really kind of cool. And then when you're done, hit close and it's ready to go. And you just hit run and convert your video. And again, you can check whether or not it opens the folder when it's done or whether or not it totally shuts down your computer when it's done. Then it tells you the start time of your video, the end time of your video, how long your video is, how many frames per second it's currently converting at, and how long it's spent converting, and the remaining time left on your conversion. Pretty straightforward, very simple process to just convert and merge videos, and this is 100% compatible with Windows 10. And then if you've had this software for a while and you're wondering if they have updates, they do have a giant check for update button here at the top, and it says I'm on the latest build. So that's all we need to worry about. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to leave a like on it and leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome tech videos. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section down below, let me know what kind of tutorial you want to see on Windows 10 or on anything, really. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. My name has been Adam Maripos Vox, and I will catch you in a future video. You've just watched another epic tech video from me, Epos Vox. Consider crushing that like button and subscribing to the channel, that way you never miss an upload. Also, check the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and hit up our Patreon campaign for early access to videos. See you in the next Epic Tech video.